<laughs> and today I am here with a shaky camera with Tiffany and Molly and we are doing photos in natural light. Uh, you are going to have to excuse me. I'm going to be taking the back seat to Tiffany because she is the expert. Did I point to the right person? Yes. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, and yeah, we're just going to take you guys through how to shoot in natural light, whether it be in a nice shady area or in like an absolute sun bomb over there uh, because it's daylight savings time and I forgot that it is still light wise three o'clock. <laughs> Let's do it. Smoke. Alright guys, so we just did some shooting, now we're going to give you guys some tips on how to shoot in natural light in all different circumstances. I'm going to give it to Tiffany because she is the residential expert and knows how to do it probably better than anyone else in this area. So Tiffany, take it away. Alright, a few tips on natural light then. I think the first thing you should think about when think when you're shooting outdoors and not using any um, additional lighting equipment is if you can control the time of day you're shooting in, that's like the go-to thought. When you're booking someone, if you want to recommend the golden hour, which I'm sure you've heard a lot of, is the hour right as, right as sunrise starts and the hour before um, sunset. Um, so that's like your prime time. The sun's a little bit lower in the sky. Things are a little bit even. We're actually approaching it now. So probably the video is going to look a lot more smooth and less harsh shadows than earlier today. Um, and then even those uh, first few minutes right after the sun sets on the horizon line when you move into blue hour, that's actually my favorite time to shoot. It's kind of like uh, your giant diffuser of the sky. Super beautiful, no harsh our shadows that you're dealing with anymore things are nice and even and you still have to pay attention to where the Sun is because you're always going to want the light source still hitting your model directly I feel like that is pretty solid start. yeah definitely where you want to go to when you're looking to shoot in natural light I know it's very tempting when you first pick up a camera to be like all right two o'clock let's go shoot I just want to shoot but that's not the best way to do it now if you have to schedule, let's say you get a wedding at two o'clock, midday, outside, this is where these next tips will come in. Yeah, direction, giving direction to situations. It's okay to put on bossy pants to be in control of uh, molding the light that you're working with. So if you can move a group into like open, even shade, you're achieving that like later in the day look um, during a time that's more harsh. Um, so any, any shade that's not blotchy um, is still getting light from the source, so like not deep in the woods. Like when you think about open shade, if you're in a wooded area, you would go where the tree line breaks because you're getting direct light flooding into that area, but still covered in shade. I think that's pretty solid. Yeah. Advice. I don't know why yeah. I said that. No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Reflectors. Um. <laughs> All right, the next step is going to be reflectors and natural reflectors, which I personally only own umbrellas. <laughs> <laughs> I've never owned a reflector, but Tiffany has a reflector right here that you've seen us use. So go ahead and talk about that. Yeah, so uh, reflectors are great modifiers to add light into your photos uh, where it's lacking. Um, so if you don't have like a natural reflector or you're backlighting your model because the sun's very harsh and you're trying to get even shade but the exposure between the background and your model is too far apart, 
to really bring together, you can add light by adding a reflector in. Um, so they have like the white reflector, the gold and the silver. The gold and silver are a little bit too dramatic for my liking and I think the white is nice and even. And you still have to pay attention to how you're directing that light back into your model. I normally don't do it front on so the light's not bouncing back flat. I normally bring it off to 45 so we get some more directional light coming back. If you don't have a reflector, that's okay. You, when you show up to a location, you can really take in your surroundings and see if there's like natural reflectors. The biggest natural modifier that photographers love are overcast skies. Um, so we really win on days where we have like a complete overcast sky. It's a complete diffuser for the sun that day. And uh, I think every photographer, even if you do love shooting in direct light, gets a little bit relief on those. Um, but you can add modifiers by looking at your surroundings. So if you're shooting in like a downtown setting and there's a big old white van parked on the street, that's going to reflect a lot of light into your model. Um, you can look at a building. Sometimes white buildings and shaded areas will bounce a lot of light back. Even pavement, if you're, if you're crouching them down, a lot of light will come right back up into them on like white pavement. And then... <laughs> All right, so next up we're gonna talk about direct light. This is when you want something really dramatic as far as casting shadows on a face. So Tiffany is gonna talk about that. Yeah, so working in direct light can be extremely intimidating. Um, so that's like high noon sun is probably the most extreme scenario where the sun's right overhead. And most of the places you position your model is gonna cast very harsh shadows. Um, so this is a time where you can get a little bit creative if you don't have a modifier, if you don't want a backlight, you want to have something a little bit more fun and unique. Um, you can turn your model directly into the sun um, and then watch the shadows of their face particularly to begin with to make sure you never have a very hard nose shadow casting across their face so they get even light. Uh, expose for what's highlighted there, what's in full sun and then you can have a little fun with shaping with shadows. So you can incorporate other things that cast cool fun shadows or you can position your model to create um, shadows that are you know flattering for like jaw lines or something a little bit creative where you like you half light their face and anything else you can think of. Oh, this is great. <laughs> She's very close. Wow. There it is. There it is. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs>